So we have an insulated direct contact heat exchanger operating at steady state with water entering as a saturated vapor. So let me try and draw it up here. We'll have uh, inlet one, and this is uh, water as saturated vapor. Okay, it comes in at one bar. And we could look up the temperature, which is T1, which is, this is P1. It's P sat at one bar, which is just under 100 degrees C, 99 something. Let me look at my notes. It's around 99 degrees uh, C, okay? 99.6 degrees C, the saturation temperature for water at uh, one bar. And then um, it has a flow rate m.1 of 5 kilograms per second. Now it mixes with state 2. m.2 is 3 kilograms per second. Now it is liquid water. We don't want to mix uh, CO2 and water. We don't, you know, we don't want to mix refrigerant and oil. You just have water, water mix, okay? So uh, the water is coming in at uh, T2 of 25 degrees C in one bar. Okay. And uh, what do you think about the condition of water at 25 degrees C one bar? Superheated vapor? Subcooled liquid? Two phase liquid vapor? Well, this is the saturation temperature at one bar. Subcool, subcool. It's liquid. It's just liquid water. So we have this saturated vapor mixing with liquid water that's cold. It's subcooled liquid. And what's going to come out of state three? And it's definitely water. Okay. There's negligible pressure drop in the heat exchanger. So we know that everything is one bar coming out, going in. So no pressure changes. And neglect affects the motion and gravity, so kinetic potential energy effects are negligible. Dead state temperature and pressure are common. Determine the exit temperature of the water. Nothing to do with thermo 2. It's just thermo 1. Can I get the exit temperature of the water? Can I find T3? True? Isn't that what we're asked to find? So we'll do a control volume analysis about that direct contact heat exchanger, and we'll write down the energy balance, and I wrote it down the previous slide, m.1h1 plus m.2h2 is equal to m.3h3. A lot of times I like to check, it's like, do I know, do I know m.1 from the information given? Yeah, m.2 from the information given. Can I calculate or do I know M.3 from the information given? Well, you do a mass balance and you sum this and this, and so you, you find that M.3 from a mass balance is 8 kilograms per second. True? So I got, I got M.3. How about H1? Can I get H1? That's H of G at one bar. True? So I can get that one. How about H2? H2, oh, it's subcooled liquid, water, 25 degrees C. You can get it. I think we can. How would we get it? H2 is equal to H of F at 25 degrees C. That's a great approximation. True? So we can get H2. The only thing unknown in this equation, this energy balance equation, is H3. So I actually calculate H3. And now I know the pressure. So I compare H3, which H of F and H of G, and I see it's in between. What does that mean about the state three? It, I have a quality. It's a two-phase mixture. I had saturated vapor. I brought in some cold liquid. And now I have some two-phase mixture at one bar going out, right? And when we do that, we find that the quality at 3 is H3 minus H of F divided by HG minus H of F. And you can calculate it's around 57.3%. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a two-phase mixture. Okay? It condensed some of that saturated vapor, that cold liquid did. 
All right. So what is the temperature of the water coming out? It's a saturation temperature at one bar. So is the temperature at 3 equal to 99.6 degrees C? That seems funny, doesn't it? 99.6 degrees C, something coming in. 20 degrees C coming in, and I still get 99.6 going out. All I did was condense some of that saturated vapor in stream 1. Now, what is the rate of exergy destruction in units of kilowatts? How would we find that? Two strategies. First strategy is you can say that the rate of exergy destruction is equal to T naught times the rate of entropy production and go and get the rate of entropy production. You can do that way. You can also do an exergy balance where you say, <laughs> The mass flow rate at 1, EF1 minus EF3, that's what comes out of that hot stream, goes to M.2, EF3 minus EF2, that's what's going into the cold stream, plus some destruction, true? And you can calculate this first term, the second term, and the exergy destruction. Either way, let me give you uh, some numbers because I see I'm running a little bit out of time. The exergy destruction rate is going to be 86.7 kilowatts. All right. That comes out of the hot fluid is 699.4 kilowatts. What goes into the other fluid stream is 879.7 kilowatts, meaning 86.7 kilowatts. Um, something looks, no, that's right, that's right. Okay. So now the last, so that's part B. There's part, answer to part A, answer to part B. Now the, what's the exergetic efficiency of that heat exchanger? You could calculate it two ways. You could say the exergetic efficiency is what I really wanted, that's the 879.7 kilowatts going into the cold fluid stream, over 699.4 kilowatts coming out of the hot fluid stream, and you calculate that it's 91.0%. True? Oh, boy. I put them in wrong, didn't I? Thank you. It's the uh, 879.7 divided by, oh man, I wrote that number wrong, 966.4 kilowatts, 966.4 kilowatts. Thank you. Sorry, just trying to go too fast.